Hey yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Ad Talk by Ad Class. We got a sick episode talking about Threads and X. They're changing names of companies over here. It's pretty wild. Dakota, what's up? Dude? It's a sick episode indeed. We're going to be talking about NPC trends uh, and ice cream slurping on TikTok. <laughs> So sick is the right word. Uh, yeah, no, this is a this is a weird one, guys. No, uh, it's gonna be good. This is this is kind of the bi-weekly episode where we actually just chat through marketing trends, what's going on, news re- related, newsworthy topics, and there is a lot going on in the ad world right now. So, yeah, Caleb, let's let's kick it off. Let's let's uh, let's get right into it. Matthew's here, of course, as well. What's up, Matthew? Hey guys, good to see you all. I'm glad that you're not on TikTok doing what we're about to talk about doing, but i don't know dude i kind of wish i was it sounds kind of fun you know they get a lot of money so i could definitely see caleb having a really good market for it yeah it sounds like something that would fit in on x.com also x.com yeah <laughs> let's talk about x.com <laughs> yeah it sounds like the type of place you would you would make money by slurping ice cream i'm not sure x.com is uh is if in case you in case you didn't know and i didn't know this until yesterday with when, when i logged into twitter um it's twitter x.com if you type that into your browser right now you type in x.com it will redirect you to twitter will it really it really will and when you get to twitter or formerly known as twitter there will be a little logo in the top left uh, which used to be the bird, good old Twitter bird, uh, except for now it's an X, just the letter X. And this is the latest in a rebranding effort uh, by Elon Musk, which I think just happened yesterday. I I think he just was like, you know, I think I'm just going to change it. And now it's changed. I even saw one tweet that was like him asking for a graphic designer to like, like give new logo ideas and the designer gave back six options in the tweet and Elon goes, yeah, I like the top right one. <laughs> and that's the logo now. <laughs> so yeah. What are your reactions, Caleb? I know, I know this might be news to you. What it do you is think about news it? to me, dude. Yeah. I just found out this morning. It's, it's crazy. It is uh it's, it feels weird. It feels to me when I'm looking at it, it doesn't feel at all aligned with like, what twitter is you know i mean like when you when you think of like the blue bird it's just it, it's like such a brand in itself you know what i mean and to switch to just an x it almost feels like he's bringing in the style of branding from like tesla and like mm-hmm. spacex and SpaceX, like that yeah. like like spacex model x now his other social, yeah. social media platform is called x he's got a thing he's got a thing i think his kid's name is x so like <laughs> It's um, got a lot of X's. He's got, got a lot of X's. There's yes. a lot of X's. So I don't know. It just doesn't feel. It doesn't feel like Twitter. And maybe that's the point. Like maybe he's just like, yeah. this is done. Like we're gonna just do something totally different. You know what I mean? Well, dude, like how much brand equity is wrapped up in that blue bird? Yeah. I mean, a lot. A lot, man. We've been seeing it for ten plus years. You know, like you don't just you don't just like rewrite that amount of brand equity it'd be like coca-cola being like hey guys we're q now (laughs) and it's like well i still want a coke (laughs) can i have a coke you know what i mean like it's very difficult to like 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 meta right has done this recently facebook to meta but but you still log into facebook yeah right you still log into instagram they didn't change the actual names of the platforms that we're using but now we're looking at x and it's like whoa whoa this is totally new. And yeah, the and, internet and with, with Meta, yeah. it felt like at least it was a part of Zuckerberg's vision of like the metaverse. And if there's kind of like some sort of explanation there, and I know like there's some explanation we can get behind kind of like Elon Musk's plan and like why he did this, but like yeah. to the general public, it just looks like something completely out of left field. Like it's just like, what is that? You know? Um, yeah. So, so yeah, going to the history, it does go back to PayPal days actually. Uh, right. Matthew, you might have more context on this, but I was, I was reading back on like, basically when he was like, you know, Musk was part founder of PayPal, which is kind of like where, where his name, you know, got popular right back then in the nineties. Cause his idea was like, we should have a way to like pay each other. That's not slow and crappy. Um, and I think he wanted to name it X all the way back then. Is that the story, Matthew? Yeah, back in 1999, um, he like, founded Zip, 
uh, Zip2 in 95, which was kind of like an online business directory. Mm. And then X was supposed to be like a decentralized banking, like online bank kind of thing. So think of it like crypto before crypto, effectively. Yeah. Uh, mm. But yeah, it then eventually turned into PayPal uh, in 2000. And obviously he just like... There's always that one X you can't get over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this was it. Yeah. His was literally the letter X. X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just can't get past it. So right. so now that he bought a company for you know multiple billions um, and is slowly but surely kind of running it into the ground in some ways, he just is like, you know what? This is my moment. I'm going to name it X. The tweet that came out today by the new CEO, um, you have to remind me your name, Matthew, but I saw the tweet. It was basically like, hey, this is X. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be like a payment solution, like a, you know, X, Y, Z, X. Yeah. Like we're, uh, we're going to use like, AI, all this stuff. Yeah, AI based, all this like technology buzzwords and stuff. And it's like, I are they too late? You know, that's my question. Are they too late? Like we have a lot of ways to pay each other already. Um, maybe too many, right? Is this going to actually help or hurt? Uh, Facebook tried a payment processor before Google has dabbled. Um, the only one that I've ever really stuck with is like Venmo, PayPal, and Apple Pay, right? Mm -hmm. It's and, not... And Cash um, App, I use Cash App too. Yeah. Cash App, yeah. They're not decentralized though. So, I mean, like this could be potentially a, a better solution. I don't know, but it seems like it's going to be hard to get a lot of people behind it, especially with the small user base of Twitter yeah. or X. Yeah. Let me... Le uh, I'm going to read out the tweets from Linda Yaccarino, um, new CEO, right? Of, new CEO in charge of Twitter. Okay. Um, so she says in these, in this, in this thread of tweets, sorry, uh, <laughs> it's an exceptionally rare thing in life or in business that you get a second chance to make another big impression. Twitter made one massive impression and changed the way we communicate. Now X will go further, transforming the global town square. X is the future state of unlimited interactivity centered in audio, video, messaging, payments, slash banking, creating a global marketplace for ideas, goods, services, and opportunities. Powered by AI, critical, X will connect us all in ways we're just beginning to imagine. Um, she goes on a little bit more about yeah. like, you know, um, fan service and the Elon of it all. Powered but, by AI is such a freaking buzzword, dude. What algorithm yeah. isn't powered by AI? Like, yeah. Instagram it's is just, showing me what it shows me because it's powered by AI. So is Twitter. So mm -hmm. is Facebook. Like such a it, buzzword. It feels a little bit like shouting into the wind for me. It, it's just like, I don't know, especially coming right off of the threads launch. It's just almost seems like a, like, I just like, let me just lash back. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. how, like, that's just how it feels, you know, like, like something's mm -hmm. happening. Let us do something too, you know, like, I don't yeah. know. That's just kind of how yeah, it is. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait, guys, we're over here. We have, we've got this new thing. It, actually, we're X now. Yeah. It's like a grade school kid or like a junior higher came up with the name. I'm sorry. I just can't get past it. It's like literally my gamer tag and like MMORPGs that I would play, like World of Warcraft type games when I was in junior high, my gamer tag always started with an X. It was like X, a tocad X, which is like my name spelled backwards, you know? And it's like, dude. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. <laughs> like the letter X has so <laughs> many like negative connotations on the internet, especially that we don't even need to talk about. We just, you can just feel it. You know what I mean? There's just like mm -hmm. that sort of like side of the internet and he's taking Twitter, which I feel like is sort of like a lovable, like, even though it's a platform that we all know is not like full of love, the Twitter bird is sort of like a lovable mascot of some, some kind. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't really associate it negatively when you see it. And now we're just putting the letter X in its place. Like, what are we, this is like algebra, you know, I don't know. It just feels weird. I, I don't like it. Uh, maybe it's cause I'm getting old and I don't like change, but like, it just feels weird to me, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's so while we're talking about the X, you might think that this is funny and this might make me seem like a grandpa, but when I went, cause I had to go today to X.com and I had to, and Twitter and just kind of see the rebranding for myself on the like login screen there's like the big you know the branding change is like on the left and they've got all these like you know what's happening or whatever their like slogan is for the launch and like in the top right of the screen was the actual x logo and grandpa caleb over here i'm like all right cool well, i saw it like that's all i needed to do i went up and i clicked the logo to get to exit 
Text it out. I clicked the logo to try to leave the page, and I was like, Bro. "Oh wow!" <laughs> like that. Dude, I, I just that's that. a great point. Maybe they just want you to leave mm-hmm. their app right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're tired of this. That's really funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, like, I'm sure I'm the minority, but I can guarantee you that there was like definitely thousands of people that did that. <laughs> Well, especially like like Windows users have the X on the right side, but Mac users, it's on the left. So like that little X is like sort of in a weird spot. It feels, yeah, it mm-hmm. feels like, like if you wanted to like close the login screen, you would click it. <laughs> so the one thing that's like really sticking with me through that, you know, thread of tweets from the CEO, not only is it as a retort to threads and what Meta is doing, but just the way that the, the way it's being communicated, like X is the future state of unlimited interactivity. What else does that sound like? Meta, exactly. It sounds exactly like Meta. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It feels like a thrash back, right? It's like yeah. they launched threads, yeah. they have Meta going for them. And it's like Elon's yeah. way of being like, I, me too, me too, right? Like I can yeah. do this too. And it just feels Video, like Video, images, right? They're saying stuff that's not what Twitter was built on. They're trying to make it things it mm-hmm. isn't, right? They're trying to, to, to basically say, oh, that was Twitter, but this is everything now. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. we don't go to Twitter to have messaging, messaging conversations. Like, yeah. that's just not something you go to Twitter for. But X, they want that to be known for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really mm-hmm. interesting. And like to, to quote or paraphrase one of the great cinematic achievements of the mid 2000s, 13 going on 30, like rebranding means that you're dying, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you could see that a little bit with when Meta like rebranded like from Facebook to Meta and like tried to like revitalize things, mm-hmm. uh, which you know worked. I think it's f- safe to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with Threads coming out, and I know we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Threads some time after launch and like, how it actually looks now. But it's definitely is another example of you know Elon is on the back foot. He's having to like scramble to try and think of new ways to. Not just like bring users in or necessarily advertisers, but also like appease shareholders right. and that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the next couple of weeks of X looks like now. Yeah, dude, I can't get over how bad that name is. I just, oh man, how much do you think he paid for the domain, or do you think he owned it before X dot com? He must have done if he was working on it from the nineties. I know, That's but true. like hundred million, you know. Something like that, probably. Hundred million is X. like is like com. is like chump change to Elon Musk. <laughs> it's wild, bro. Yeah. Anyways, let's get let's get into the next topic here. So, threads. We've mentioned it a little bit, and, and Matthew, I find it hilarious when you're like, "Yeah." So, the CEO of Twitter tweeted a thread on X about you know what I mean. It's like, oh my gosh, the current state of things and how we describe them is exhausting in itself. Uh, are you sure it's called a tweet anymore? Is it not just an X? Are are we not just Xing now? Uh, or anyways uh maybe like uh it's like to the power of x you know like x squared x cubed all this a thread of three tweets is now x cubed yeah um (laughs) dude it's it's bad but threads let's let's talk threads so we we chatted about this a couple weeks ago on the pod actually the last time we chatted about it it was just an idea that we had like heard about and then like days later it, it launched it launched to a crazy awesome reception of like a hundred million people signing up for it. But here we are, what, two, three weeks later after the launch. And, uh, there seems to be a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a fall off maybe, um, for threads, <laughs> I think is what you could call it. A hundred yeah. million people signed up and now, uh, the, the daily active users is in the teens of millions. So it's like something like uh, maybe 17 million daily active users. So yeah. well, 70% decline, right. Yeah. Um, in yeah. threads users to con- contrast that with Twitter, Twitter or X is at th- 350 to 400 million monthly active users. So yeah, we're talking about close. just not even close, right? Yeah, not even close. Uh, what are your going. thoughts, Caleb? Um, I think that we all expected there to be like this spike and then like a dip. I feel like it's dipping harder than probably anticipated. Um, I personally have stopped using threads as much as I was in the first week. And so I'm definitely a part of that 70% that's kind of just stopped using it. Um, and it's mainly for what we've talked about like already in previous episodes of the pod, which is that like 
it's just th there's not enough features there yet and it's not like serving the purpose of what you would want out of that type of platform it's just a bunch of like random statuses from a bunch of random influencers and none of it's cohesive you don't get current events you don't feel like there's community and i don't think that they're gonna get a lasting audience there until they solve that stuff so that's kind of my two cents yeah. so so what do you think do you do you re-vote on what's going to win long term twitter threads because i think two weeks well ago, i think i think threads, that they right? just they just set a nuclear bomb off at, at x and i don't know if that's gonna <laughs> like who knows if that's ever gonna be a thing again so i don't know man like it's weird it's really weird i yeah yeah it's just all weird. I, it's hard for me to predict anything because it's like I, I didn't see the X brand change coming, and I don't know. It's like that throws well, the you didn't. whole curve Come on. Into it. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's wild. So, so threads like like I think they predicted it. Like their CEO is basically like, "This is gonna happen," you know. Like the, this is obviously there's a lot of hype and the hype dies down and whatever I, I agree with you i don't think they expected it to be this bad necessarily i mean 17 million active users that's like tiny 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 for for an, a new platform um especially from a peak of 100 million but right. that being said like i feel like it's this is probably its core user base i don't see it dropping much below this like if these are its core users they could build from that and they can in, in, you know bring more features increase sort of the longevity of user uh sessions and, and things like that and you know build from here like the, if this if they need a foundation this could be the foundation and then you know a year from now it might look like 50 million but um as long as they can show growth i feel like they'll keep pouring resources into it you know yeah um it's got all the makings of a good app it just yeah it's lacking a ton of features that people expected it to have i think and and that's kind of the thing is that maybe they release it just a wee bit too early with just a little bit too bare bones you know um yeah mm -hmm. yeah but, no i agree with them it's yeah it's interesting it's like I don't know. It feels like they're just both Elon and Zuck seem to just be rushing things. And I wonder if it's because they feel like they're in the spotlight and like this is their time to just like do all the stuff now. I mean, they're kind of always in the spotlight, but it seems like in the last few months they've been more so than normal. And maybe they're just like, let's take advantage of all this like free press that we're already getting and just like launch stuff, you know, and change stuff around. Yeah. I don't know, you know, but I don't know. It's weird. I don't weird. know. It's, it, it's tough because, you know, they would have had a lot more retention uh, even if they just explained what was going to be coming soon mm -hmm. not even just like rolling it out right. just been like you know we love that you're all here and we recognize that there's still stuff and like things that threads need to grow here's what you can expect over into timeline you know yeah. um but there's been none of that it's just been maybe this is part of like the idea of like creating a core but you know with with musk arguably stepping on rakes left and right you know, in terms of like how his slash X has gone. Um, I just don't see why there hasn't been more of a communication with the threads like community, especially while they just came on and been like, got some like initial feedback on like how things look mm -hmm. and like did some like use case stuff the first few days and then took it back to a dev team and just like, I'm 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 over explaining to Mark Zuckerberg how to run like a, right. a, an app. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> um, but it just seems common sense. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's one of those things where you look back at it and you're like, he he probably was like, well, we probably shouldn't have rushed it out that fast, right? And and like now it's like the whole like talk about the fight and the you know like all of that stuff seemed really big in the moment when they were about to launch. And he's like, let's do it, just get it out there, we'll figure it out later. And then like they're starting to figure out that the figure out later part is actually a lot. And yeah, like what actually ready. makes the whole thing worth using. Yeah. And now it's like they might have wasted all of that brand equity, um, you know, to, to just lose users. The the one silver lining is, and people have talked about this, but like you can't deactivate your Threads account without also deactivating your Instagram account. So mm. I, I feel like like at this point, what they could do is a year from now, once Threads maybe kind of has a little bit more of like an uptick, they'll just be like, oh, by the way, Threads is just a little section in the Instagram app now. And mm. that's how they're going to just increase user retention you know what i mean like yeah. they can, there's so many moves that they can make that 
that will work in the long, you know, the grand scheme of things, instead of the little marketplace tab that they tested for a while, it's just going to be threads. Right. right. And you just pop right over to that feed. Like I could see that working really well. People might say, why didn't they do that at the beginning? Who knows They, I know they have a method for the madness, but going down to 17 million users can't have been planned for, I mean, in my opinion. So yeah, yeah it's interesting. We'll see. I, I mean, we still want to see ads at some point on threads. Obviously this is ad class. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we want to be able to do some placements, some te text placements on Instagram or, or on threads. But, um, if there's no users <laughs> to, to be, you know, to even see it, then obviously it's not going to be worth it. So yeah, yeah it's, exactly. it's an interesting one. Um, but, but yeah, let's shelve the threads conversation. I think the next one up uh, that, that we wanted to chat about today is actually all about AI. Um, and what's th this is actually kind of huge, right? And we've had a lot of talk about AI here in the past, how we were using ChatGPT, how we're using a bunch of different things uh, you know, at our company. We, we run a marketing agency ad class. Obviously, we use AI frequently for a whole bunch of different things. And, and I think the whole world kind of has had that similar buzz cycle to like what threads had, which is like, we were all talking about AI for a span of six months. And yeah. now I feel like we're kind of getting to the place where it's dying down a little bit where mm -hmm. like people aren't, you know, if you look at chat GPT's daily active users, as an example, that's gone down, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the hype has kind of gone away, which means this is kind of like the timeline where people are actually building projects and then the yeah. hype is going to, you know, go crazy again. Well, something happened this week that I think is really relevant, which is all of the big AI companies, I'll say all lightly, I'm sure there are some that didn't do this, but the ones that you think of when you think of people working on AI, we're talking open AI, they made chat GPT, mm -hmm. Microsoft, uh, you know, with Bing and, and how that integrates Google meta, all of these big companies came together this week, had a meeting at the white house with Joe Biden and Joe Biden basically was like, Hey, so we need some safeguards here on this AI stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Which is something that we've been t talking about quite a lot with AI. Cause it's like, if this thing goes unchecked, this could be like the next Oppenheimer, right? Like this yeah. could be the next like atomic weapon that yeah. we're basically creating to fight ourselves, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, like if we really think long-term, that's kind of scary. So basically they, they, they came up with a list of like safeguards this week, Matthew, I don't know if you have that handy. I think it'd be cool to go through, um, kind of some of the stuff. One of them I know off the top of my head was like, if there's AI generated content, like images, videos, I think even text somehow they want to find ways to work in like a word mark or like a, like a, um, you know, mm. like when you get your photos taken professionally, they have like a little word mark of who took yeah. your photos and you know yeah. that it's like owned by that person. They yeah. want to have like a generated by AI like mark on there so that people, mm. when they see an image or a video, they know that it was AI generated stuff yeah, like that, like right? Like little privacy concern type stuff. Um, so that's one of them, but there were several other safeguards presented in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest safeguards um, is actually the communication of information between the major companies. So, um, you know, especially in a capitalist society that's built on you know, shareholders and competition, and, you know, that's a good place to build a business. There isn't always a lot of um, collaboration with new tech kind of things. Yeah. You know, we even saw it recently when... Um, Threads was released, there was that lawsuit that came out from um, Twitter uh, Musk yeah. because of like insider information kind of like stuff. Like you hired all the people I fired and you're just getting all their ideas. It's like, hey man, exactly. you fired them. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you sure they're true. free agents right. now. <laughs> Usually a, 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 a spirit of collaboration um, with groundbreaking tech. So one of the things, and this is all voluntary, um, uh, the, between the companies um, in terms of what they're um, signing up to be as part of the safeguards. One of the major things is they're making a commitment to share the information to improve risk mitigation, mm. um, especially with like governmental, civil society and academic stuff. So that's where, you know, a lot of the watermark kind of stuff comes in, uh, especially when I think of academics, you know, how much AI could really damage research um, and like thoughtful human research as opposed to just like machine learned um that's a huge one uh, because normally you will not get these companies talking to each other 
Right. Normally it's just like trade a siloing of information. Yeah. Trade yeah. secrets. And before you know it, you know, one company's completely just gone off the deep end with the other like companies being left yeah. behind. You know, mm. kind of similar to what we saw with like Meta. This seems to have a more backward facing look of look at what social media has done and it was relatively unfettered, you know, in yeah. terms of like its impact on general society and culture. And I feel like these safeguards are going to be put in place to make sure that we are actually not looking back in 20 years time and thinking, man, we should have had watermarks or stuff, or we really should have been communicating to make sure like, you know, mm -hmm. to, uh, <laughs> I'm always full of movie quotes. You know me guys, I love my movies, but Jurassic Park, you were so obsessed with could I and not thinking about the should I. Right. Mm. Um, so I feel like this is actually a really positive cultural progression. And, you know, sometimes just reining in technology is not necessarily a bad thing when it you know, relates to societal risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and think about how rare this is. That that sort of like speaks to me that like th these big companies working on AI understand how insane AI could get enough mm -hmm. so that they're going to sacrifice some profit in order to like safeguard the American people or mm -hmm. the, or the people of the world. Yeah, like humankind. <laughs> like that's wild. Yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> I mean, dude, but that's actually like that's actually a huge deal. I mean, like Yeah. Pharmaceutical companies aren't doing that, right? Uh, they mm -hmm. invent a medicine that could just save a ton of people. They're going to charge for it if they're the only one that knows how to make it, mm -hmm. right? Or, or they own that patent. This is sort of like saying, hey, we know that you guys are all doing your own thing and you're making like crazy AI that's going to be able to do insane things, but like kind of have to like know what you're making because this could like end the world. And they're like, yeah, that's a good point. Normally they'd be like, nah, this is worth the, you know, trillion dollars, man. I'm building this thing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's hopeful, Matthew, but I also think it's scary <laughs> that like they're willing to do this, you know? Yeah. It, it's giving credence to that sort of cynical slash fear mongering that we have of how dangerous AI could be. Yeah. Like they wouldn't be doing this if there if wasn't, wasn't credence right. to that thought. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Oof. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Yeah, the, and, and the other thing, like that they mentioned on that on the uh, article that I read, was obviously like the watermarks and stuff like that. But another thing that that the president was trying to get them to say yes to was using AI for things that are going to actually help humans, so like cancer research, right? Like uh, a bunch of other like things, like security related things that are like. AI could do a really good job of finding the cure for this thing. It might not be super profitable, but like you guys have to actually use it for this purpose. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's interesting. I think we're, we're AI is not going anywhere. I, I love sort of the buzz cycle that now we're kind of like on the downside of the buzz cycle and AI doesn't seem as like sexy to talk about. Right. Mm. Like people are still obviously talking about it, but right now the quiet time is where, people are really building stuff with AI, right? And everything comes in cycles. It's like if threads had their up buzz cycle and no one's talking about it now, that just means that they're quietly working on some stuff that we're probably going to hear about, you know, in months, right? And yep. and so uh, I, I love that like our attention goes to these places, but like, I don't know, man. I think, I think AI is still... Like I said, it's like the next, it's like the next Oppenheimer, man. Like it's, which, which is one of our next topics here, but it's like, it has the potential to change humanity in, in ways that we can't even fathom. So yeah, I agree with you, Matthew. I'm, I'm happy that it's at least being discussed at the governmental level, but if crypto is any sort of like sign of what the government can and can't control and how they respond to things, they're going to be like four or five years behind this thing. You know, like they, they don't know what they don't know. And these companies are going to share only what they feel is necessary to share. And we're going to be playing catch up, you know, as, as humans. And so, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, development though. Certainly is, yeah. Um, okay, so we could either go to um, we've got a couple other fun topics we can hit on here. Do we want to hit um, either the Barbenheimer marketing strategies? Uh, we could hit one of my favorite ideas, which is the girl dinner trend and what Popeyes have been doing. Can you explain that uh, to me? Can you just explain to me what the girl <laughs> dinner trend is? I went down the rabbit hole. I don't. I don't <laughs> understand what it is. <laughs> 
Do you want to take it, Dakota? Yeah. So, so there's a TikTok girl. I don't know her name, and it was just like a random TikTok that went viral. And she's like, "Yeah." So I was just looking through the other day about some girl was talking about. I got my girl dinner, you know, and she goes, and funny enough, I'm eating my girl dinner right now or whatever. She shares her camera screen, and it's just like some cheese, a piece of bread, and like. Um, I don't even know. It was like maybe crackers or something. It was like cheese and bread basically. Right. Like, and she's like, this is girl dinner. And since then that blew up and apparently a lot of girls in the world related to it. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, that's girl dinner. Okay. So, so, so just like marketing cheese and crackers, <laughs> <laughs> like, like just, just like bread and cheese is like, girl, like, I think it's like basically saying like, if a guy is hungry for dinner, like he's probably making like, I don't know, a sandwich or mac and cheese or something like that. But like a girl will just like eat like some cheese and bread and call it like nibble. Yeah. yeah. Just nibble yeah. on a few things. Call it, call it dinner. I, yeah. yeah. Which okay. I don't okay. know how true it is or not, but it resonated with a lot of people. So of course, you know, the first company to like find a way to make this marketing strategy is Popeye's chicken. And hilariously, if you go to their website and you go to Popeye's and they have like, all, they have like all the categories of their food menu on their website. And then there's just one that says girl dinner and you click on it and it's literally just a list of all their sides. It's like, it's like mashed potatoes, biscuits, uh, like coleslaw, you know, Mac and cheese. And, uh, that's it. There's no chicken mm -hmm. on it anywhere. So of course, you know, like the world erupts and it's like half of the people be like, wait, 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 sides, that's girl dinner. And then the other half being like, this is not right. Women eat, need to eat meat too. This is sexist, blah, blah, blah. You want us all to be skinny. And it's like, oh, well, dude, like the girl dinner thing came from a woman saying that she was just eating cheese and bread. I don't know. So yeah, you got to catch up to the whole thing. But basically Popeye's is, uh, they have a girl dinner menu. So Honestly, though, yeah, that's like viral marketing, marketing, you know, yeah. I was going to say like that. I love that, you know, it, it's obvious like these bigger companies, they have like their social media team that's just waiting for stuff like this. And as soon as it comes up, they're like, that's it. That's it. We're making a yeah. girl dinner menu. Get on it right now. <laughs> like, Dude, and I cool. know that so many of these like social media employees at these companies are like 18 years old. Yeah. Like they find the people that just know how to get into the conversation so quickly, like yes. Wendy's and, you know, Scrub Daddy and all these companies that like you always see time and time again doing crazy things. It's because they know what works with younger generations. Like who's yeah. going to go out and get girl dinner at Popeye's? It's going to be like the 18 to 22 year olds or maybe yeah. even younger. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And they found a way to, to enter that conversation. So I think it's cool. I think it's, yeah, so it's genius. Honestly, it's, it's smart. So, okay. So I've got a question for you guys. Like this is basically like soft charcuterie, like basically, you know, yeah. it's just like rounding up random stuff in your house, which by the way, but, we eat for dinner at my house all the time. So yeah, if it's girl it's dinner, I'm dinner. all about it, dude. Meat, dude, cheese board, yeah. give me girl dinner. Dude, seriously, I we love that too here. Like, throw some put a Bobby t shirt on me and call me a girl. You know, I'm fine with that. Oh, I'm but... good with it, dude. If I get to eat charcuterie, <laughs> some mustards and stuff, give it to me. Oh, yeah. Some, I like a so, like, okay, like so... olive dish with some olives, uh -huh. pickle, yeah. Oh, pickles? some tapenade. Oh, yeah, so good. But wait, did you say you, tapenade? Uh... Is that like a yeah, why do you put an e at the end of that, dude? Did you just did you say tapenade? No, no tapenade, tapenade. tapenade. That's <laughs> no, did you just add a syllable to tapenade? Mm, tapenade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I really love a good tapenade. <laughs> I'm I'm like Julia Fox when she's talking about uncut gems, you know, like <laughs> ah, Benny Safdie's mirrors and uncut jams. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name is Matthew, and I love a good tapenade. <laughs> I'm going on my yacht here, and I'm going to have a tapenade with my olives. Oh, boy. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> I just right. like, buried myself there. But yes, yeah, so I'll uh, tapenade but... with a charcuterie. I like it. I like it. Okay, I, I enjoy tapenade too. But uh, <laughs> the question is, if you're just like sat alone, you know, say, you know, the wife or the girlfriend or whatever you have is out of town and you need to come up with dinner for yourself mm. are you gonna be like okay let's just throw together some random stuff like you know oh, i found a half eaten packet of like crackers and some cheese or are you gonna like whip out some meat like prepare like you know your meat and two veg like what would you go for 
uh, way too many references there that Michael Scott would have said something back to, but it's fine. They're, they have this thing <laughs> called Uber Eats. I was just going to say this. <laughs> they have this thing called Uber Eats, and as soon as you open it up, <laughs> you see some delicious looking stuff on there. Yeah, I don't know. So, mm. so for me, if I'm home alone and I'm hungry, there's no chance I'm cooking something. No chance. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be Uber Eats. Like, I'm also willing to, like, drive out and, like, go pick something up. But, like, the chances of me like cooking a big dinner for myself like when there's no one here at the house <laughs> it's just not gonna happen like i don't know i just not don't see it happen. happening unless i was not like happen. that was my plan for the evening is i had this big plan of like i want to make this amazing dinner that i want to just try out that like maybe is something tori wouldn't want then sure no, dude. but like the chances no. of that are like like <laughs> like nothing basically no yeah. it's not happening because like part of why it's fun to cook is to watch the person that you cooked the thing for enjoy it like, yeah, but what if what if you love something and you love cooking it, but your spouse is not into it, and then this is your one opportunity to make something that like you okay, know, name, like, name you the like. thing that you would do. What what would it be? Mine would do be like, just, like I I guess like a burger, but JC likes burgers. Yeah, so. see, you'd have to find something that like you know specifically that your spouse does not like, but you love, and if you have that. Then I can see you doing that. Huh. I'm just picturing Caleb like making himself a dinner, <laughs> and then he's like eating it in front of a mirror so that he can see himself enjoy it. Like, mm, so that's really good. good. Okay, wait a second, guys. Wait, uh, wait, I'm wait, glad wait, you like wait, it, wait, Caleb. No, no, wait no. I get your point, Caleb, but no chance that you're doing that. No, I, there's I, no I, chance. Probably that I'm doing it. The chances are very small. But I will say that there are a ton of <laughs> single people out there that cook for themselves. So it's not like a weird thing to like cook for yourself by mm. when you're by yourself. Okay, okay. true. It's been literally so long since i've lived alone that i can't i can't relate anymore but like you're right there's i i made it sound like people who live alone live terrible existences and i'm very sorry for, for that Matthew's like like yeah what are you gonna do sit in front of the mirror and eat by yourself I'm like that's not what people do but do you think people who live alone they're just like sitting on their phone while they're eating aren't they do you think they're like they're quiet, that like or they're, pro- down they're, they're, they're sitting on their just... phone or they're probably watching tv they're probably eating on their couch yeah, yeah so that's you, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, that oh just that seems sad. So, girl dinner is just like foraging, and boy dinner is just Uber Eats. Boy dinner is just not cooking. <laughs> boy dinner is <laughs> definitely yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's ordering it's fast food, dude. Honestly, if it's just me yeah. and I'm getting something out, I'm like going to McDonald's. I'm like I'm getting like the worst possible fast food that JC wouldn't get mm. if it was ju- if we were together because mm. she would never in a million years go through the McDonald's drive through. Never yeah, in a million yeah, years. But I like it, so mm. I'm gonna take that once a year opportunity to get like a couple double cheeseburgers you know <laughs> 10 piece chicken mcnugget uh coke from mcdonald's and then the next day i'll feel like absolute garbage but i will at least you know have had my guy dinner that would be guy dinner for me yeah you know mm-hmm. yeah but let's chat barbenheimer so uh you know uh, here's the thing broke every record in movie theater going experience this last weekend barbenheimer really? crushed all the records between barbie and oppenheimer Caleb, you're probably not up to speed on this. So pop quiz, which one do you think did more revenue over the weekend between Oppenheimer and Barbie? You've heard people talk about both, right? Yeah, for sure. It's it's annoying to say this because I love like the idea of the Oppenheimer movie. That's definitely what I would have chosen to see. But I think just based off of like audience size and who would buy tickets, my vote probably goes to Barbie because you get to bring your kids. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, Barbie wins. Uh, Barbie okay. did what? Uh, Matthew is at 100, 100 billion or something crazy. Um, 100 million. I'm bad at numbers. It was 170 were the two figures, right? 100 million. That 100 billion. 100 Imagine trillion? that. It was 100 trillion? <laughs> Hang on, I'm pulling up. I think Barbie did 100 million, and I think Oppenheimer did 70, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 150 so, for Barbie. And 150. For yeah, yeah. So by by their own rights, both crushed it. 
but the weekend together blew every record out of the park for every movie going weekend ever, like ever, wow. ever. Um, wow. so really cool because it's post COVID we're back, baby. People are going to the movies again. So that's a win, yeah. right? Uh, cause Dude, who doesn't which, love which, going to the movies, which I'm stoked out of my mind for because Hannah is like getting to the age now where I think I might be able to take her to a movie. And yes. so I'm waiting for like the mm. perfect kids movie to take her. That's going to like keep her Oppenheimer. <laughs> Yeah, it's three hours. I think it's going to go great. Hannah's actually fascinated with atomic bombs. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a joke. It's like, um, all the children's books we have end in a giant explosion. She loves it. <laughs> no, but like, I, I'm waiting for like the perfect like movie, like kids movie that's like short, something that's like a, like an, just over an hour, like maybe hour yeah. and a half. And then like, I think that's going to be the mm -hmm. perfect thing. But anyways, dude, I'm hyped. Need, like I frozen four to come out or whatever it exactly, is. Exactly, dude. Something like yeah. that. Dude. Something yeah. like that. So, well, I mean, The Little Mermaid, they just did the remake. That was two and a half hours long. That's, that's way too long. Way too long. And it's then insane. the Spider-Man movie is also two and a half hours long. And I was, and she, Hannah mm, loves Spider-Man. Yeah. Actually, believe it or not, she she loves Spider-Man. And so I was like, I wanted to take her to Spider-Man. But I'm like, she's not going to sit through a three hour thing. Like, no way. No. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. So like having now, now I have Lincoln, obviously he's almost 11 months and then we've got another one coming in November. It's going to be years before I get to go back by, you know, with the family to a movie, but mm -hmm. Oppenheimer, we want to both see it. JC wants to see it and I want to see, see it. it so, too, dude. so we're going to take turns, you know, I'm going to go. Oh, one really? night, that's the go another night. Yeah. That's a strategy because we both want to see it. And, and this is one of those things that's coming out once in IMAX with like the special film and all that stuff. There's a theater here in Nashville that is like, I guess Christopher Nolan literally went to the theater and put 30 grand into it so that they had the equipment to show this film the right way. Okay. I'm like I can't miss this. I want to actually see it. So that being said, I agree with you, Caleb. I wish Oppenheimer would have been the big winner. Um, Barbie doesn't seem appealing to me at all, but it's absolutely crushed the marketing. And so this is ad talk. So we got to talk through the strategy a little bit. Everywhere mm. I've turned, I've seen this sort of like Barbie pink sheen on things, right? And mm. and just that little awareness builder in itself has kept that movie top of mind for people. And then Oppenheimer has taken like almost the exact opposite approach, which is like kind of a low key, like they're kind of leaning on their star studded cast to, to be like the thing. I'm not saying that like Margot, Margot, what's her last name? Roby, Robbie, Margot Robbie, Ro Robbie, Roby. Say it. I say Robbie, but I also say <laughs> Tapanade. So don't take it seriously. Can't trust anything me. that comes out of Matthew's Mar <laughs> Margot, Margot Robert. Mar um, <laughs> so, so I'm not saying like, she's not super famous and like, you know, Ryan Gosling, obviously, but like the Oppenheimer cast, we're talking about one of the most best, you know, biggest directors of all time. Right. We're talking about just an insane cast and all the marketing there has basically been like interviews, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you've seen like Killian Murphy actually opening up about the movie and, you know, and they've done an insanely good job of like showing bits and pieces of these interviews in different social media networks and in different platforms and commercials and things where it's like, Oh my gosh, I got to see that. You know, I loved him in Peaky Blinders, whatever it was. Yeah. So it's to two totally separate like marketing strategies. And then somehow, because they're coming out on the same weekend, they like fed off of each other and became this thing called Barbenheimer. And I think it's because like Barbie is so like pink and girly and whatever. And Oppenheimer is so dark and like gritty that yeah. like people have just like combined them in some of the most unique ways possible. And it's yeah. ended up being the biggest weekend in movie going ever. So like it worked. Mm -hmm. I just think it's fascinating. It's so cool. It is really cool. I mean, to the point where Emma on our team saw both on Friday. Yes. But so back cool. to back, you know. Spent yeah. five or six hours at a movie theater to watch that's, both. That's so awesome, honestly. It's it's. I think you nailed it on the head there, Dakota, though. It's that they're so drastically different that that's what makes it fun and exciting, right? It's like Barbie is like yeah. as far like girly, kitty, just like, you know, fun loving right like that's kind of the, the attitude and then Oppenheimer is like a movie about making atomic bombs like you know just yeah. like a terror like a terrible time and so in history like a so non-fiction like, biopic you know like yeah. totally different totally different dude totally different but I think that's what that's what did it so I think like as a prediction right like if we're if we're gonna do some ad talk here is I think 
I think that the prediction is that you'll start to see this more. Like, I think that movies will probably start to have some fun with this, like later down the road where you see like a horror film, like a really big horror film come in the same weekend as some other thing, right? It's like the exact right. opposite of that. And so I don't know. I think it's going to be. Dude, I love better. it. I just love that people are going to movies again, man. It's, it me. feels right. It feels cool. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing um, I think about Oppenheimer and like, I, I think like a lot of directors would probably have felt threatened by by launching a movie the same weekend as like another blockbuster movie. Mm-hmm. And, but what I love that happened here was like, they didn't compete with each other. They, and I still they don't think they it. felt, they embraced yeah, it. they embrace like the fact that this, these are so very different that there's going to be a few people that want to go see both. I mean, maybe like, yeah, you know, let's just call it a third of the people will want to go see both. But for the most part, we can both win. Everyone can win. You know, I mm-hmm. love to say that. Like that's how they both approach this, and and I think it built up the the appeal of both movies. You know, uh, it yeah. just it just mm-hmm. proves the fact there's a lot of people in the world, and and just because you're competing doesn't mean that one has to win over the other. Now that being said, Barbie definitely won <laughs> the opening weekend, but they both had really good showings. Yeah, they, and, they both crushed it. They both crushed it. Mm-hmm. Really cool. And you know, seventy five million for Oppenheimer, which is an R rated three hour long. Biopic. Non-fiction biopic. Non-fiction biopic about the man who developed the atomic bomb, and then basically, you know, the most of the latter half of the movie is dedicated to Senate hearings. You know, mm. like that isn't something that just screams seventy-five million opening week. Right. You know, yeah, and it's, it's a feat. Just incredible. It's, it's really it's, cool. It's beautiful. I wonder. Beautiful. I wonder how much. Like, what was the budget for each of those films? Like, that would be a good fun stat to pull. A lot. I think it was something like two hundred mil or three hundred mil for. A lot. Yeah. For opera, uh, they're pretty equal, I think. Okay. The IMAX rigs and stuff were insane for Oppenheimer, so I know it was very expensive. This might sound stupid, but like obviously I understand what nonfiction is, but what is a biopic? I don't think I've ever heard that before. Just about uh it's a movie about like an autobiography or a biography. Like uh, okay. Um, okay. so okay. it's a bio picture, right? So bio picture, okay, okay. Yeah, so like in this case, it's about Oppenheimer, right? Um, the movie is centered around him. So uh, it's not just a nonfiction about like the, a war or whatever. It's very much like a biography about that person. Okay. There's some version of per, yeah, part of his life, sense. yeah. Oppenheimer cost $100 million. Um, Barbie cost 145 oh, So that's, that's actually profitable. like, it's already profitable. And it's, you know, the only the opening one. weekend... That's a win. Whereas, you know, the new Indiana Jones just came out, Dial of Destiny. No one's talking about that anymore. That cost 295 million. Holy cow. No way, dude. Yeah. I don't it think that movie like, did really well, did it? No. No, it did terrible. No I didn't even know it came out it. until today. So there you go. <laughs> Wow. All right. So we got a few minutes left. And speaking of going to the movies, right? Speaking of, uh, I'm introing this like it's an ad pitch. It's not. But speaking, speaking like going to the movies, um, oh, there's another another big change in, in a, our, one of our most popular streaming apps, uh, Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's happened pretty recently. And uh, this is kind of old news, but obviously they started taking away the ability to share accounts, right? And the stock price kind of changed after that happened. And then um, we've kind of been eagerly waiting to see, is Netflix going to just go down the tubes because they're basically stopping you from being able to share your account with other people. They, mm-hmm. They're basically making you stay logged in within your household, right? So, so mm-hmm. they're looking at where you're logging in from, et cetera. Well, the, the earnings call or whatever came out, they improved the revenue by 3% last quarter amongst all of this crazy stuff happening. And they generated more new paid accounts than they had people cancel. So Mm. their bets paying off. Turns out they know their marketplace and, uh, they, they, they made a bet, uh, that they could get more people to join even while making a bunch of unpopular decisions. And they did. So Netflix and on top of that, their ad supported users are at an all time high also, hmm. which apparently a quote from them is like, that's a really small percentage of our, of our revenue. We don't really even count that, but that's like a huge percentage of people that use Netflix that's supported by ads. So really interesting stuff there. Uh, we've talked a lot about like paid versus ad supported and different networks and things like that, but just know that Netflix might be ushering in the new era of sharing your account password is over type mm. stuff. <laughs> so, mm. I think watching things is just going to continue to get more expensive for the general public. 
Yeah. I'm honestly shocked it took them this long. I think they could have gotten away with this like years ago, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, especially before like Disney Plus entered the marketplace and you had like all, all of the other competitors, like Netflix was like the OG. And I think yeah. that when they had kind of that monopoly, they probably could have got away with it back then. Cause no, you know, no one yeah. would have been like, I'm just going to give up my Netflix. Cause like for a little while, Netflix was like it. Like that was, it was like the thing. thing. It was like the only thing you really want to watch. And it had a stranglehold yeah. on streaming for sure. It had all of the best original shows, you know, and that's been part of the discussion is like, Hey, Netflix originals kind of suck now. That's what people have been saying. Right. Like I watch stuff on Hulu. I watch stuff on Disney plus I watch stuff all over. And you know, people are basically saying like, actually, you know, they're pretty good still. And we're willing to pay for it. <laughs> You know, yeah, it, I will say, though, you do see a giant quality difference. Like like when I'm on Apple, um, like, you know, watching like Silo or like any of these other things that have come out, I'm like, man, this is like insanely better than what I'm seeing on Netflix. Like the quality yeah. and the stars and like everything just is like not even close. They're trying to catch up. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to catch up with quality, but all right. Well, this has been a fun episode. This is uh, this is a, you know, the state of the union as it were, as it pertains to ads, the internet, all things crazy going on. Um, if you want to follow us along, check us out on x.com. No, I'm just joking. Uh, we have a Facebook group. Uh, we're in the, uh, we're the, we're on the old Facebook still. Uh, you can't stop these 30 year olds from being on Facebook. So check us out at class.com. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash free ad class. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Come have some tapenade with us. Yes, please. <laughs>